Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? You know, we're back in person, and we can be out and about still. I don't know about you, but I'm very excited. Um, let me just start off by introducing myself. My name is Dr. Tony Damon. I am the proud new principal here at Cherry Hill High School West. Thank you. So I want to really give you all a warm welcome, like the West way, and how we have just loved on one another and tell you that I have really felt the love and the warmth from everyone in this community, in this school, and I just want to extend it to all of you new parents and let you know that when you see the hashtag, the West way, it is real. If you need anything, if you want anything, please reach out to us. If we don't have the answer, we will get the answer and get back to you. So I want to start off a little bit by introducing myself. Again, I am Dr. Tony Damon, proud principal here. Um, I come immediately from the School District of Philadelphia, where I served as the principal at Morell Dobbins CTE High School in Philadelphia for the past nine years. My experience there was very challenging, but the most rewarding that I've had in a long time, because as you can imagine, there are many needs in the city of Philadelphia. But the one thing that it taught me is how to cooperate and coordinate with resources, with community, and to provide opportunities for young people. I'm believing that that is the reason that they brought me here. My expertise is in career and technical education. While I would like to bring some of that here, let me share with you, I do not intend to turn this into a Votech, but I certainly intend to make sure that our children are college and career ready, that they walk out of this door with industry credentials, college credits, and opportunities to do whatever it is they want to do. I have learned that I have an amazing team of individuals here that are very much on board with what the vision I have for this school. So as you may have heard, the school district board of education has three goals. And they are wellness, student wellness, purpose and passion, and connecting behind, beyond the classroom. So our focus this year are in concert with those goals. This year we will be focusing on social emotional learning. What that means for us is a tie in to wellness. Yes, we understand that our children have had some learning gaps, not being in front of teachers in 18 months, but we're not going to come right in the door and jam the academics down their throat. We want to get them in the door, make sure they feel comfortable, that they feel good about their experience. I hope that in the past three days, your children have felt that warmth. They felt that people here care about them. We want them to know that we are not teaching content. We are not teaching math, English, and science, but we are teaching children to be the best they can be. Our next focus will be integrated learning. That is the purpose and passion. I share with the students the question that I usually ask is, what is it you want to be when you grow up? Because I truly believe that any child can be anything that they want to be. And so many of them don't know today, and that's fine. But now is the time to start thinking about it. So while they're in the math class, I want them to start thinking, what can I do with this math? When I'm in the science class, how does, does this connect to the world around me? And then our third focus this year, which is tie-in to connecting beyond um, the classroom, is our cultural responsiveness. As I said, we believe strongly in the West Way. And what that means is being very responsible and responsive to everyone. No matter whether it's gender, race, religion, respecting everyone. Making sure that everyone in this building is recognized for who they are, who they want to be. We know that many of your children are coming right out of middle school, and, and maybe they have questions, maybe you have questions. Not saying that we have the answers, but what I will tell you is together with our counseling team, with our psychologists, with our amazing teachers, administrators, together we will learn how to take our children to the next level. 
And so that is our focus. So just a few things that I do have to share. Uh, we're excited. We're in person. First day of school is September 9th. We will start at 730. And we are so excited. We are tired of being online and remote. We are, I mean, seeing the kids this week has been the best thing that I've had in the past, I'll say, two years. The kids just came out uh, not apprehensive at all. So I think they're going to be OK when they come in here. We will uh, practice social distancing to the best of our ability. We are going to certainly have available sanitizers all around the building. We're going to encourage hand washing. Uh, we have signs up, things like that. We want you to know also that there will be breakfast and lunch available on the first day and every day thereafter for every child. Uh, the FDA has uh, provided for um, free breakfast and lunch for every student for the remainder of this year, again, due to the pandemic. But what the district does ask, and we ask you to do too, is please fill out the free lunch form regardless of whether you think you're eligible. It's similar to the census it still provides funding for the school district. So if you would, please, even though the lunch is free for everyone, the breakfast is free, please fill out the free lunch form, and that is on the website. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming in with masks and keeping the masks on. I realize, like you, it is uncomfortable. But it is the one thing that we can do to try and slow down the spread of this virus. So we do thank you. And we just ask that you would encourage the students to just be mindful. It's just what we have to do. Uh, what I can tell you is, so that you understand how we will do it in school during the day, I shared it with the students. We're going to do it in love, according to the West way. So I said to the students, I understand you walk in and you forgot it. It's fine. We just want to ask you, please pull up your mask. And so I asked them, just pull it up. We're going to ask that every teacher, every administrator, every individual ask them nicely and in the spirit of love. If we have to ask them 10 times, we will ask them 10 times in a spirit of love. Because I know there have been times I got out my car, walked all the way up to the door of the store, I saw my reflection in the glass without a mask and had to turn around and go back to the car. So if I can forget, how can I not think that a young student would forget as well? I wanted to also address the uh, question of lockers. Many of the young people have asked, uh, are we getting lockers or are we not? We are not going to do lockers like we have done in the past. We will give out lockers upon request. One is because we don't want so much uh, transmission of the virus, students in and out of their lockers. But what we also found is young people barely use the lockers. So if a student wants a locker, they only have to request it and they will get a locker. So we just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. And then the final thing that I have for you um, this evening is around communication. It is my expectation that I will be communicating with you regularly. I have been informed, though, that as a district, they would like for all principals to communicate on the same schedule so that one school is not giving uh, information before and the other one's not getting it all, so that all parents can feel that they are getting the same information the same time. I can tell you today that our first scheduled um, communication will go out next week. But at, at any point, you feel you have a question, you want to um, know anything, I just ask you, please, just reach out to us, OK? I know for myself, I have an open door policy. I shared with the students, I shared with the staff. If I'm in my office and I'm not meeting with someone, my door is open. Just pop in, say hello. Uh, if I don't have a meeting or anything, I certainly will take the time to talk to anyone. Uh, but again, appointments are preferred, but not necessary. Um, 
As I take my seat, I would like to introduce, as although I am a new administrator, I am so proud to say, Mr. Chuck Gull Culligan is retiring October 1st, but we have a new ninth grade assistant principal, Ms. Janine Barnes. If you would, please join me in giving her a warm welcome. Thank you, Dr. Gaiman, and welcome to class of 2025. Um, their freshman orientation, I guess. So, I once again, I'm Janine Barnes. I am new to Cherry Hill West. However, I'm not new to the Cherry Hill District. I've actually been here since 2002 as a high school math teacher um, over on the other, um, at East. So, I've last, in the past year, I was a math coach working with both schools, and this year, uh, when Chuck decided to retire, I decided to apply. And here I am. Um, I'm excited to work with all of you and your kids and as we support your student experience, their well-being and their success. I can't emphasize enough I'm a parent of how communication and how we partner and how the school really does support. Me being new, if there's something that you need and I don't know the answer, I will make sure that I find out the answer. We have an awesome staff here that I've only got to meet half of them. Uh, so far that has been supportive to your children. They've been supportive to us and letting us know that we are, you know, one and we're going to get through this together. If you have ever had any questions relating to your kids academic as a whole, please feel free to reach out. I got to meet your students this week and we had, you know, watched them, you know, learn their way. We were dancing at the barbecue and that's really what I am to here to kind of support them and cheer them on. Um, I believe that is, let's see. Oh, the last piece is something, a little tidbit of information that I shared with your children on their first day here. Um, the other day, I believe that there are no accidents in life, right? On Monday, I went to the dental hygienist and she was a West graduate. And then I ran into a former West student at the grocery store. And they both spoke so highly about their experience here their success, one's in a nursing program, and the other one was a dental hygienist. And I, that's all I want for your kids, to have this experience, become successful, and do what they love when they leave here. They're gonna be in this community taking care of us, so right now, it's our turn, my turn, to take care of them. Thank you. I'm gonna introduce Mr. Ramos. He's our other assistant principal. Awesome, thank you Ms. Barnes. So I've been asked tonight, so my name is Augie Ramos. I am an assistant principal here at High School West. I'm actually going into my eighth year. I'm the senior house principal, so I'm watching my second group of West Lions graduate in a year from now, which is, I'm getting old, it's crazy. Um, it's my charge tonight to speak about restorative practices. So the first thing I'll say is I'm a father, I have two children, I have a rising third grader, and sometimes my son drives me nuts. Love him to pieces. My wife tells me that third grade is a challenge year. I, I, I didn't know this, I, I know high school. So in guidance with him and just being a parent, he does things and I'm like, oh, I wish you wouldn't do that. And how I respond makes all the difference. I can yell, I take things away, punish, I can encourage, I can explain, What's going on? How, well, why did this happen? And hope for a better resolution. Does anyone own a pet, particularly a dog? I do. I learned a lot 11 years ago when I first got a dog. Positive reinforcement actually works. Oh, they do something good, give them a treat. Yelling and spanking, that doesn't work. I'll do it despite. They're like, oh, you wanna do that? Oh, I see your slippers. <laughs> so those two little silly analogies that's kind of how I like to describe restorative practices. So five years ago, you would have just called me the disciplinarian. Your child breaks a rule in our school. Hey, this rule book says you can't do that. This is your consequence. I'll see you in Saturday school. I'll see you in after school detention. And I don't want to say that holistically, all that's just gone and it's whatever you want. But the notion is that restorative practices connects discipline with this idea of social emotional learning that we need to feel safe and secure and a sense of belonging to learn. 
to want to be a part of things, to want to follow the code of conduct, to understand why that in a group of 1,400 students, there are things that govern how we enact and how we engage, and that we're going to mess up. I asked your children who were here the other day, or some of as I've seen them, you know, how do you show someone respect? How do you show someone you care about them? And they said different things, and it's different for everybody. But we're not perfect, is the point that I try to emphasize. If all of our children, mine included, were perfect, they wouldn't need us. They wouldn't need our guidance. They wouldn't need our support. They certainly wouldn't need math and science and English. But they're not. They're growing. And, and restorative practices is one of the ways that we want to aim to support your children. And again, thank you so much for letting us work with your children. Uh, just letting my kid go to school, right? I see him, like, okay, bye. I am trusting someone else to love my child, right? To guide his learning. I barely know his teacher. Think about it. You barely know me. You're trusting your children with me. Thank you. So I appreciate it. We all make mistakes. So my job is to coordinate how we move past those mistakes and move forward. If you have any questions during the year about restorative practices, how things are addressed, I'm here to support. I'm here to serve you and your children. So thank you. At this time, it's my honor to, to bring up your, class, your, your children's class advisors, uh, Chief Boucher and Ms. Connie Kuzaratis. everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. My name is Connie Kutsaratis. Um, when I am not your student's freshman class advisor with Chief Boucher, I am the student assistance counselor here, um, working with personal social development of your children. Um, okay, you guys might think Chief's a really weird first name, but that's not my first name. That's my rank. So I teach junior ROTC here at Cherry Hill West. And, uh, so if any of your sons or daughters are still interested, there's still time. I'm sure Dr. Damon would be like, hey, hey. So I've already talked to some folks. Uh, this is my third year starting here at West, and again, I'm very honored to uh, participate and be a co-class advisor for your kids, so. All right, so we want to talk to you a little bit about what we hope to accomplish with your children. Um, really, ideally, we want to make this year back super special for them. We want them to feel welcome. We know that there is a lot of stress and a lot of um, potential anxiety to coming back after 18 months of being out of the building. But we want to make this so memorable. Um, Chief Boucher and I will work together to help them, you know, really own what they want to see in their class. So if they want to do fundraisers and they bring ideas, we're going to do everything we can to support them. Um, we also fortunately get to help them with planning the homecoming dance for the entire school um, to participate in, which is really exciting because it's like the big start to the school year, you know, the first big social event. So hopefully we will see good things in the future. Um, we will prep and we will roll with whatever life brings us, but we want it to be really special for them. Okay, so the news about that is, is that we are in a very compressed and short period of time in order to get all those things done. So a couple things that I want to mention that on Tuesday when we met with your children, we put it out there. Who would like to be part of the executive council for the class of 2025? Some of your children, not certain who, raised their hands. But again, we haven't had the touch points with them at that point in time. So I throw this out to you right now. If your son or daughter wants to be a part of the executive council, in other words, their leadership for their own class of 2025, all they need to do is reach out to either Connie or I. And I'll say this right now, my business cards are on the table that you walked in, when you walked in, my business cards are there, my email is on that, my phone number here at the school is on that. Please feel free to take one of those cards, reach out to either of us. I just, mine just happened to be out there right now. We didn't pre-coordinate that. It's just something I just ran to my office and did. Uh, but grab that, and please feel free to reach out to us anytime. Um, so again, if they're interested in being an executive council member, they can reach out to us, and they can find us through either their guidance counselors, whatever the case may be. I'm in A5, and you're in the guidance office, correct? Okay. The homecoming dance currently is scheduled for October 27th. That's really not much time at all. And being that we want to be open, we currently have in this class year's 
which is probably not enough money to have, um, it's enough money to have an event, but it depends on how they want their event structured. So the reason that we're talking to you right now is to let you know that we don't have much time to do fundraising, and, and to be honest, probably the easiest thing to do as a parent, guardian, whichever the case may be, is to either contribute financially, or whether it be in water, or decorating, or set up, or tear down, any number of those types of things will happen. And as we are going forth into the new year, we will structure a plan A, which will be indoors, which the dance would be in the cafeteria, or a plan B, which will be in an outdoor event, which we have not come to resolution. Yes, sir? Great question. Class of 2025. Yep, that's great. Thank you very much. Great question. He asked who we make the checks out to. So class of 2025. That's phenomenal. So again, we want their dance, the homecoming dance for, this, for the school, uh, to be as successful as they want it to be, but the freshmen kind of own it and run it. And we're going to help them do that, along with the help of the executive council. Uh, we will do that, and we will, Ms. Roscoff will uh, help us out with that as well. So Connie and I are both, this is our first year doing this. And as she already said, uh, we want their first year here at West to be a successful, happy, healthy year and fun. So that's really it. So really, those are the things we want to talk to you about. An executive council, the homecoming dance, um, and the fundraising things, because we just need to get that taken care of at this point in time. So are there any other questions that I can answer? All right, thank you guys very much. Let's see who we've got next. So, the PTA. So, I will turn it over next. Hi, my name is Missy Lang. Um, I recognize a lot of faces, so I'm very happy to see a lot of new faces. Um, I'm sorry, Kristen is our treasurer. You could just raise your hand, Kristen. Um, we have a, my husband has a joke in my house um, about volunteering. I was involved in the elementary school and the middle school and our swim club, and um, he always says that I missy people. Um, so I'm hoping to missy some of you tonight. Um, just with my presentation, um, you know, I've been the president for three years, or this is my third year, um, but we haven't had a normal year, so I really don't know what a normal PTA year is. Um, when my fr my son was a freshman, I was the um, involved in Rosa, so I wasn't really heavily involved at West. Um, so. To join, one of the things that you can do is if you picked up that paper, you can um, mail that into our membership uh, coordinator, um, or you can go online. There is a link under the website where you go to Quick Links under PTA, and it will bring you to our member hub site. You can join that way. Um, one of the other things that uh, PTA does is we support student activities. Like I said, um, we haven't really seen a full year of student activities. Uh, last year we tried to improvise and um, the PTA was very generous in terms of providing um, waters and candy and we did grab and goes for each grade level um, on a Saturday. So we were outside and they were able to not really congregate but at least see some of the kids that they went to school with and it really brightened up their faces. Um, it was a, a great event every time we had it. Um, we did a um, movie night on the stadium last year and that was a ton of fun. We purchased an inflatable um, screen and projector. Um, we had probably about 150 kids and at the end of the event it was, you know, their faces were just lighting up because no one was doing anything at that time. So we hope to do a couple of them this year as well. Um, we did a holiday drive last year, which we had never done before, which was very successful. Um, we had over $3,000 in donations and gift cards, as well as, I, I don't even know how much in apparel for children who would have not been able to um, celebrate the holidays. Um, we also do things for teacher appreciation. Um, we had a grab and go breakfast last year, and during teacher appreciation week, um, you know, we did a couple of special things during the day for them. I'm hoping for, you know, a, a, a normal year this year so we can do more for the teachers and as well as for the community. Our main fundraiser um, is our nice and easy donation. So you can either do that when you send in your uh, membership form or you can do it online when you go to the PTA website. We have other fundraisers and the paper out on the table for the mom sale was there. 
Um, that's a great fundraiser as well. They're beautiful, so if you like flowers, um, go ahead and order those. The other thing that we do is the spring um, flower sale, and then we do movie nights, I, I mean um, restaurant nights, so that's really easy. So if you don't feel like cooking, um, we'll get a percentage of um, that back to the, the PTA. One of the other reasons to join the PTA is, you know, being that you all have freshmen, I know that when my son came here, I am not from this area, um, so it did get me more involved in the community, it helped me meet the teachers, and it helped me meet all the other families. The other thing I wanted to talk about tonight is project graduation. So when you think of project graduation, you think that it only benefits the seniors, and that night, it actually does. So in the class of 2022, we'll experience project graduation. This year was the first year that I actually stayed the entire night, and it is amazing. I never had this where I grew up. Um, the kids come after graduation, they come at 10 o'clock, and we purchase, we rent a, um, a company that facilitates the evening for us. We have inflatables that they run around, um, they, there's games, there's plenty of food, there's a DJ, there's um, tons of things for them to do, but it is a safe place for them to be the night of graduation. That being said, it takes a lot of money to run it. Our biggest fundraiser for Project Graduation is our bingo fundraiser, and it happens usually in the spring. Last year we were, were able to have it at um, one of the swim clubs in the area and it was fantastic. We raised over $14,000. At the end of the night for project graduation, we raffle off um, tons of prizes for these children to take to college or for their next step in their life. TVs, iPads, um, fans, it was incredible. Headpho headphones, sorry. So we encourage you as freshman parents to get involved. Like I said before, you don't think that your, your kids are gonna be experiencing it now, but everyone we hope will experience it and go. This year we had the highest attendance. It was over 200 kids. The um, class last year was like 360, right? Um, I think we did a better job last year in terms of getting the word out and educating people about what Project Graduation is about and how much fun it is for the children. Um, the other form that I have there is uh, kicking off our grade level fundraiser. Um, what we like to do is, uh, so if your child is graduating in 2025 um, and they can afford the donation, if you write a, the check out for $20.25. Um, you will be able to do all of this stuff online as well. Um, just give me a, a week or so to kind of clean up our, our website. I just actually dropped my son off um, at college last week and I've been trying to um, get through that whole move. Um, so we are working on our website. Um, and, but the form to join the PTA is actually out there already. So um, you can go ahead and do that tonight if you'd like. Any questions? We do have a face. <laughs> Uh, we do have a Facebook site and uh, we do have an Instagram site. I do communicate through that as much as I can. Um, I do send information to the school so that they can post on Blackboard as well. And I do send things out through our member hub. So I do try to you know, get you from every side in terms of communicating. Um, my email is on the forms. If you go onto the PTA website as well, um, there are a list of our email addresses. My phone number is out there if you have any questions. Okay, thank you. So as always, we plan an evening where we give you all the information we think you need, right? But um, there's always questions out there. So at this point, um, I would like to ask, if, are there any questions? Oh, yes. Mr. Ramos. So, yes, technically that's what the dress code says. This is my eighth year. We've never enforced that. Children sometimes like to keep their coat on, make them feel comfortable. We don't press it. Okay, any other questions? And no question is a silly question. No other questions? Oh, okay, in the back. 
Absolutely not. Um, now, I don't know, how do they sign up? I'm, I'm not a coach, so I, I'm, I'm Carol Roscoff. I coordinate student activities. I do know that practices are well underway. They, all the teams had scrimmages today. Um, I would suggest that you reach out to the coach um, directly and ask if they, if there's, you know, if your child can still participate, I would suspect they're not going to tell any child no, they can't participate. But the, the coach is the best one to answer that for you. If you, if you need a list of the coaches, I can get that for you. And what I do know is we are still uh, taking care of the sports physicals. That's why I believe that we are definitely still um, accepting students for sports. Are there any other questions? Wow, we, we did a good job. Okay, yes. So no, we're not doing um, temperature checks, but we do strongly encourage and ask parents to do that screening at home. You know, those questions like, does your child have a temperature? Are they not feeling well? Have they been exposed? And then if the question is yes, then they should stay home. Um, I will say that if anyone um, demonstrates signs of being sick in the class or says they're not um, feeling well, then they will be sent to the nurse office for further examination, you know, and just to call the parent, just to talk to them if they're saying they're not feeling well. Any other questions? Yes. So there is a form out um, front that explains everything about the bus, but does anyone know whether it's automatic or? Um, your, your student has been assigned a bus route if they're eligible to ride the bus. On the form, it tells you how to go on Genesis and find out where their bus stop is and approximately what time they'll get picked up. Yes. So what I will say is, and I don't want to get any information incorrect, I believe that information is still being developed and we will get the same information that all schools will from Malberg, from the, from the central office, and then we will share it with parents. But I do know they are thinking about that now. Okay, I'm gonna go in the bag. What preventative measures? Well, right now we are being, is that what you're asking? Well, all, all CDC recommendations with regard to social distancing, right now they're saying that they're recommending to the extent possible that we would keep young people three feet away. Um, so we are recommending like in the auditorium like this, we ask students not to sit right next to, next to each other, but to spread out some in classes where we can, we're moving, uh, desk out some. We are, of course, doing extra cleaning measures. We have signs, directional for, you know, you walk on the right side, you know, so that everyone's facing the same way. Um, again, cleaning. We're encouraging more hand washing. I think that, that, oh, no, we took that out. We're doing up one side, down the other, but it's the same stairs. 
Oh, yes, and the district is providing for us, um, I don't know what you call them, but like the air ventilation uh, units in the classrooms. Was there, a, did that answer your question? Okay. 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 No, your daughter would just use the same Chromebook until she graduates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although they're expect if they have their Chromebooks, they're expected to bring them in with them every day because there might be work online for the teachers to have them. If they do not have one, so okay. Sorry. If they're, they have a Chromebook, that, if they were issued a school Chromebook, they are asked to bring it with them every day. Okay. If they do not have one, they can bring their own device. If they do not have a device to bring, or they don't want to bring their, their own device, there would, in the classroom, there'll be extra charge devices for the teachers to use, just in case, you know, to differentiate instruction at different points in time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other, oh yes. Did you get No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. At any point in time, if your child needs a Chromebook, um, I believe there's a form that you fill out on your Genesis portal um, requesting one, and then we will work with our technology uh, person here and deploy you, your, your child one, and they'll be a fine one. You're welcome. No, it is not. So if you have a school district computer, a device, that you are expected to bring. If you want to bring your own personal, you can, but you are not expected. We will have some in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And that, like uh, Ms. Barnes said, at any point during the year, if you decide you want one, you just fill out the form online and you can get one. Okay, it, it looks like we have no more questions. One thing that I just wanna leave you with, as, as we all remember, high school can be either the best of times or the worst of times. It is our hope, our expectation, that for your children, it will be the best of times. If at any point, your child is feeling uncomfortable, just not happy, please let us know. It is definitely um, my contention that every child should have a good feeling in school. I will just share that I was a parent of a child who was bullied in school. It does not only affect the child, it affects the entire family. And my child was bullied so bad, and this was in third grade, to the point where she didn't want to go to school and it became a physical um, condition where we had to get therapy and things like that. And it took us two years to get her back to a place where she was feeling confident about herself and, and switching schools. And, and we went to the school every day and tried to talk to the principal and she would always make excuses, not want to meet with us. So please know I am sensitive to the needs of children and families. If you need us, we are here for you. Another question. Okay. Hi. So again, we are encouraging social distancing. We're setting it up to the best of our ability for the three feet. But again, when young people come together, we're not going to say, you know, if, they, if they're sitting this close, we just want to say, if you could separate some but we're not gonna fight with children, we're gonna strongly encourage, and we have space available for them. We even have some setups outside for when weather is uh, appropriate, some students can go outside and have lunch. Thank you. And there was another question. Yes, I'm not able to locate the book list online. Please have a list. I'm sorry, say it again. Book list. Book list? Oh, the, what, the, what books and supplies? Um, mostly, in 
the high school, the teachers in, in high school tend to get those on the first day. Um, if there is something online, I don't think, I don't think we would have anything um, in, that, in that regard. So they'll get their supply list from the teachers as they get their syllabus on that day one. That, I mean, that day zero when we start. And if you're asking about what books your child's gonna read, I teach English. Um, what I try to do twice, I do it, you know, the first couple days of school, I will give them a list of the books that we'll be reading, and I also give the list of the books to the parents on back to school night. And that's generally a policy that most of the English teachers in our department will follow. So if you wanna see what books your child will be reading over the course of the year, probably after the first week of school, they should be able to answer that for you. Okay. Back to, back to school night, you're hearing it new and for, and for the first time, um, September 23rd. Okay, were there any other questions? Today, we're saying in person. <laughs> that, that's what I can tell you. But what we also want to try and do is have it in person, our vision, our hope, is to have in-person and an option for online. Yeah, so we're trying to give, you know, options for families, okay? Are there any other questions? We don't want to leave any question unanswered. Uh, and if I can, just I just would like to give a plug for the um, ROTC program. Um, right now, they are very much undersubscribed. And I want to share that much of what I'm hearing is because many families and many students believe that if they get into the ROTC program, they are then um, expected to go into the military. Let me just tell you, um, from my experience in ROTC, one, you are not expected. You are not signing your child up for the military at all. But what I have seen is the level of professionalism the character, the pride that those young people walk away, the leadership that they develop carries them anywhere, into the workplace, into college, uh, into the military if they so desire. But I have seen so many young people get connections and things like that. It is a great way to develop someone. And many of our young people, especially coming off this COVID, they're a little insecure right now. So if you have an opportunity to ask your child to go explore it, talk to uh, Chief o. Boucher, talk to some of the other young students. I had a chance to talk to a couple of them. They are planning on doing some great things and I don't even think the few that I talked to were talking about going into the military. Just, you know, the confidence to apply to college or go out into the industry. They really believe, which is true, they can take on the world. And so I just really uh, encourage you to ask your children, girls and boys alike, to please consider it. It's a great program, and we don't want to ever think about losing it because it's undersubscribed. Okay? So if there are no other questions, I just want to, again, thank you all for giving us your time and sharing your children with us. And we look forward to a wonderful next four years. Have a good evening.